Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're meeting endangered African penguins. Look. South Africa, beautiful and vast, with beaches that stretch along rugged, expansive coastlines, cloud-kissed mountains and dramatic seascapes. This week, Animal Watch is staying at the wild and beautiful award-winning nature reserve Hootbos, just a stone's throw from the ocean. Home to the Big Marine Five, Whales, dolphins, seals, sharks, and of course, penguins. African penguins inhabit this southerly tip of Africa, and us humans would presume there would be hundreds of thousands. Well, that is what it seems every time we watch a wildlife show on TV or see wildlife photography. But this is not the case. Only 21,000 breeding pairs remain in the entire world and according to experts, this species is on its way to functional extinction, meaning that very soon there will become a point of no return for these magnificent animals to survive in the wild. Some believe that they will become extinct in the next 15 years. Group Boss arranges for its guests to visit the local wildlife rescues. So today I'm visiting the African Penguin and Seabird Sanctuary in Hansby supported by the Dyer Island Conservation Trust, where they are fighting hard to rescue, rehabilitate and return African penguins to the wild that have been injured by both humans and marine animals. <laughs> Hello. Hello, hi. Okay. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to the African Penguin and Seabird Sanctuary. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's wonderful to have you here. And um, would you like to come and see the work we do and meet our penguins? I would love to. Please follow me. <laughs> Thank you. Dionette shows me inside and I see an enclosure to my left filled with penguins and a seabird. It has explained to me that many are unable to return to the wild due to injuries that mean they would not survive. So some are full-time residents. Dionette shows me some of the rubbish and tangled fishing lines found inside seabirds and penguins explaining that many dead and injured birds are found to have died from rubbish and pollution consumption, a reason why plastics must be banned. We have some very special patients in at the moment. Oh, really? Yes. What is Big it? Big surprise. Um, we received them from the island um, because of the fish shortage. Their parents were struggling to, to raise two babies, so we've got... <gasps> Two one babies. of each of the babies oh, to raise. How old? They are about six weeks old, so they're in their complete fluffy, very cute stage. Oh, gosh, very I can't feisty, wait. but very fluffy. Feisty. So you would oh, right, yes, like I'd love to meet to. our babies. Yes, it's yes, time I for would. them to yes. eat. Okay. okay. They're also still meant to be under the parent at oh. this age. They can't regulate their body temperature, so yeah. we need to keep them warm and huddled, so we keep them together in a little crash. Oh, I can't wait to see. So. Here we go. Oh, look. Oh, cute. So they each get a number when they come in so that we can identify them, but we also name them just because it's nice for us. So what's this one called? This one is called Darcy. There you go, sweetie. There you go. 1.05 kilos. So we record their weight every, every morning. Um, we can monitor their growth and we also feed them according to weight. So we feed 10% of their body weight plus 10 grams in the morning and in the afternoon it's 10% of body weight. So these little ones we just hold like a little grapefruit over the flippers. They just want to feel safe and reverse into you and, and sit where they are. They're not running away. You'll see when we do the adults, they're very different. At this age we cut the fish up and we take out the, the heads and the, the fins and those things don't have any um, feeding value for these little guys. 
So we want them to use everything they eat to grow and not expend energy on, on digestion, extra energy. So we want them really to, to grow from what they eat. Um, we have to hydrate them because they are not, the parents would regurge a, a fluidy mix. Okay. Because they're not swimming yet, they're still too little. So is this specimens that is this this going is, on? Yeah, so this is an electrolyte. Oh, oh. <laughs> See, I'm in such a hurry to eat. This is an electrolyte solution, and then we grind up the vitamins and give it to them in this. Thing. It's just easier than popping pills. Yes, it's big, I know. And we can't help talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, they're so cute, aren't they? Okay, then I'm just going to fill the tummy because although we feed according to a formula, sometimes there's still a little bit of space. Then when we carry them, after feeding, I have to hold the stomach. Um, because it would just stretch from all the fish, so we just protect them that way. Okay. Right, and into a clean, clean crate. Into a clean crate. There we go, little one. So would you like to try and hold I the next one? I would love to hold okay. the next one. You might one. get a bit dirty if you don't no, that's want all right, to fish it's all good. Put your body against the table. Like this. And hold over the wings. Just think over grapefruit. the wings, yes. grapefruit. Just hold like grapefruit. Like little grape. Yeah, like and do there. not press there because that's where they need okay. to swallow. So oh. very gentle. Just just be there as a backstop for them. Yeah, I'll take the bites. Okay, then we have two more that we got off the island. is halfway between fuzziness and, and these blue feathers. Yeah. Until they start swimming, they need to have flip -flops. Okay. If they, um, penguins that come in rescue penguins as well, if they're not hydrated and you feed them, you can actually kill them. They need a lot of fluid wow. to be able to digest yeah, their food. That's serious. Yes, I know you're hungry. Juice first. Oh, your whole face is full of juice. They're very soft when they get their first waterproof Yes, feathers. it is, it is. It's, it's really, yeah. really soft. And then you can see on the flipper, it's all feathers, even though it looks like scales. Yeah. It's all feathers, so they, they're the birds with the most feathers. Yeah, beautiful. For the first year, they will look like, like this, and they have their little lightning stripe. That they yeah, very cute. Yep. Yeah. And you can feel they're very soft. You can feel here as well. This. Oh, that's so dense. Yeah. So tell me, how many African penguins are there currently in the wild? Um, they reckon there's about 15,000 left. That's not so much no, at all. Not much. And this is purely because their, their food source is going. The, the adults have to molt once a year to, to replace their feathers and they have a catastrophic molt. So that means they, they have to feed themselves up until they're very fat and they sit on land for three weeks, push out all their feathers at once grow their new feathers and then when they're waterproof they can mm. go back to sea. So because of their cycles being thrown out with the egg harvesting and everything that's happened to them, they sometimes breed too close to their molting season and they start going into molt while they still have little chicks. They are fantastic parents but when nature takes over and that process starts, you know, they, they have to follow their survival instinct right. and they, they can't actually go to sea to fish for, to feed their chicks because they're not waterproof. Yeah. Can people do anything to, to help the situation? Is there anything being done to try and slow down this extinction? They, we, we are trying on several different ways. Choose the fish that you eat wisely. Look at the sassy lists, the approved fish. Sardines are actually also on the you know, don't eat if you can off it list now. In the Eastern Cape, um, two of the, the penguin islands there have got marine protected areas. The higher island doesn't, um, mm. we're lobbying for it. If you can just get a 30 kilometer stretch around it, it yeah. makes such a difference because at this stage they've, they've tracked some of these adults and they have to swim up to 50 kilometers to find fish. They can live at sea, they can easily go out for two weeks and they sleep on the water and everything. But mm. when they have tricks, you know, to come, come and go and actually find food. Yeah. Do you ever dissect dead birds and then find like junk and plastic? I've found one with pieces of plastic, also, uh, styrofoam, all sorts of different plastics in it. Sometimes they die of disease and a lot of the time of starvation. And with the seabirds as well, most of them um, 
when they come in and they die, it's, it's a blockage and that's usually plastic. These penguins, they were in their millions um, before we came along. Unbelievable. And Dyer Island, which is quite a small island, with the last count, it was 1,095 pairs left. In the 70s, there were over 70,000 mm. penguins on that island. I'm led outside and the penguins all start queuing up to walk up the narrow bridge to receive their food and medication. They certainly know their daily routine. All of these penguins are permanent residents. Um, they were too, too injured to be released back into the wild. So we have um, Bob. Bob is a female. This one is Bob here. Bob washed up as a, as a youngster and um, while Bob was washed up on the beach was attacked by a dog. Is that quite common? It sometimes happens and, and people also don't think when they see a penguin washed up, they don't actually think to take their dogs away. Bob was bitten and came in with a very swollen head. It recovered but Bob kept some scar tissue and now the eyelids don't work so we Okay, can't so he has Bob. to stay here forever. She, she, sorry. <laughs> this one is Hope. Hope is Bob's husband and Hope can't get himself out of the water to, to be able to survive out there. On the one leg you can see it's, it's very thickened and on this leg, Hope lost his toes. If they have leg or foot injuries and they can still get out of the water, we do release them. Do you know what the injury was caused by? It was probably a bite, probably a seal bite. A seal bite? Yeah. So um, why, why are the seals biting the penguins? Um, the seals, and it's not all the seals, but especially males, um, they have learned with the fish shortage that there's an easier way to get fish. And they wait for the penguins when they come back from their hunting trips and they just go for the stomach. <gasps> What? Yes. And they literally take the fish out, but the aim isn't always all that good. So sometimes the legs or the flippers get in so the way. So this, this is abnormal behaviour from the seals. Yes, and this is caused from, from a fish shortage. Yes. All right, so who else have we got? We have Flipper. You can see Flipper's left flipper is completely stiff and he also has scar tissue on his leg. Um, he was attacked by a seal. And then Flipper's wife, Captain. When you say wife, <laughs> is it because they pair up, they make really good friends they, of each other yes, and they, 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 they stick together? They officially a couple. And we used to have a love triangle and then Flipper <laughs> came along and resolved that for us. Okay. So Captain and Flipper are together. Um, we're not sure what happened to Captain. Captain also washed up as a blue um, and Captain's eyes are damaged and the one eye is completely blind. So explain to me about the colours when you say washed up as a blue. Okay, so you met the little chickies inside, the yes. little fluffy ones, so that's, they're born naked and then they get that fluff and the fluff becomes more dense mm -hmm. and then eventually that fluff is replaced. Um, the middle one that you met um, is kind of half fluff of blue feathers, so okay. the blue feathers are their first waterproofing okay. feathers. And then the little blue that you met inside, the one that's completely smooth, that's yes. what we call a blue. So that is their first waterproofing coat. Okay. From about two and a half months, they're blue, so they're waterproof, and then at about a year old, mm -hmm. um, they go completely brown, all their feathers die, and the pink skin of the eye comes out. Aha. Uh -huh. And then they molt into their first adult plumage. In the corner there, we have Sandy Gwyn, Sandy Gwim came in blind and completely emaciated. Often blindness is a side effect of dehydration and emaciation. So as we repair that, the sight comes back, but oh. her sight never came back. Her sight, so um, she has to stay here then? She has to stay here. In front here we have Bultong, which means beef jerky. Bultong washed up as a juvenile, so brown, ready to oh, melt right. into adult so like, a, like a stringy and piece of Bultong. Very, very emaciated. <laughs> Bultong was about 1.3 kilos and Bultong was supposed to be over 3 kilos at that stage. So oh. very, very thin and looked like a piece of fried meat. <laughs> Bultong had a bit of a scar on the head, so we right. think Bultong might have been picked by a goal or something. Oh. Or, you know, got some injury and Bultong has brain damage, so we Aww. cannot release Bultong, mainly because Bultong has no feeding instinct now. And then Bultong's friend oh. Carlos, um, they didn't used to be friends, but Carlos now has a nest, so I think Bultong just wants to snuggle because it's cold <laughs> in winter. <laughs> just using him. Carlos has got a, a very tight left, left flipper, also a seal bite injury. Another seal um, bite, wow. How long have the seals um, been biting the penguins for? Is this quite a recent thing? 
Yes, it, it's been going on a few years, but it's, you know, we see more and more of it. More and more as time yes. goes on and the fish yeah. get less and less. Yeah. All right, well, well, let's not keep these poor little penguins from, <laughs> from having their food because they're sitting here <laughs> looking, going, feed me now, and I feel rather guilty. We teach them to free feed as early as possible when they are here because that means we don't have to handle them and stress them. Yeah. The main thing is to keep them as wild as possible. They're quite bitey, aren't they? They are. <laughs> <laughs> so when they bite, what does it feel? like it hurts a lot it hurts a lot so <laughs> the, um, was it like a peck do they draw blood they do draw blood and um, the african penguin is different from the other penguins they've got a hook in front and cutting edges on the sides oh. of their beaks so that looks pretty difficult to pick the penguins up pick yes. up the penguin <laughs> 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 but this, this, what's this one called? This one is called Kaboom. Kaboom. As in the sound dynamite would make because of his behavior. Because of the noise. Yes. That, and so Kaboom washed up in Strays Bar Harbour and we were called about him and he was rescued by volunteers of us and we brought him here. He was extremely thin when he came in. He was too thin to complete his molt from juvenile to adult. So he has these very funny brown cheeks, which is not <laughs> normal. Okay, this is Biltong. Hi, um, Biltong. So this is the one you were saying needs to be helped to, yes, to, because, to feed. And you'll see Biltong stands very differently. Biltong doesn't fight. <laughs> Biltong wants to lean back and eat like a Roman god. <laughs> like a Roman <laughs> god. I love it. So they're different from other birds. They don't have a, a proper crop. Yeah. Um, the esophagus just runs straight down to the stomach at the bottom. So they can eat when they find fish at the sea, they can swallow a lot. Yeah. So people are always amazed at how the fish just goes down. But they've yes. got the space for it. Yeah, another one. And when it comes to molting season, they will eat up to 15 fish or 20 fish per feeding wow. to get fat enough to yeah. molt. Because Stompy doesn't have legs, we don't force her to come up. And if she's in the pen with the others, they will pick on her as well. All right, so no no legs at all um, at the, the back. The one side is just a stump and the other side's got a little bit of leg and kind of one toe. And leg. do you know how she lost um, them? That was a fishing line entanglement. Fishing. And it was so bad that she literally wow. lost Wow. So leg. this is common with penguins, is it, to get tangled up in the fishing with lines? With all seabirds. With all seabirds. And um, yeah, we see it with actually even the, the seals, the, the whales, they, they all are victims to, to fishing lines. So, you know, we have big projects to, to put fishing line bins out so that fishermen will put yeah. their lines back. Yeah. Um, because we see horrible injuries. Do you often get members of the public bring the penguins in or is it a call and then one of your team goes out to retrieve the it's, penguin? Um, most of the time it's a phone call. Um, we've put up signage everywhere where we could possibly think of and still keep on putting out with our rescue line number. It's um, seven days a week, 20, 24 hours a day. Yes. Um, so people will call us for, for a penguin yeah. or for a seabird that's in yeah. trouble. And I bet they will call you because if they go to attempt to pick up one of these and they get a little bit of a nip, they're going to be they, like, yeah, they, they right, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, can, you guys could come and get them happily. After feeding, the penguins are led back down to the enclosure where they're encouraged to swim in the jet pool provided for them, which has currents to mimic the sea and strengthen their swimming muscles. One by one, the penguins leave the pool and head on back to their enclosures. Many are living in pairs and have made bonds and partnerships just like in the wild. One handicapped penguin who has lost her legs seems to be in heaven and DNA explains to me that it feels like freedom for her to be in the water and she is just the same as all the others once she is in there and tends to stay in there for hours well after the others have left. It is clear to see that the staff at the African Penguin and Seabird Sanctuary are doing an amazing job and without them many endangered African penguins would die annually. I decided to sponsor the two older baby penguins I helped feed as they didn't have names and called them Honey Pot and Bavaro. If you would like to find out how you two can sponsor a penguin or buy an igloo house for them to live in while at the rescue centre, you can find out more here. www.dict.org.za You will be given a lovely name plaque which will be mounted on the wall outside the entrance door. I can't wait to see Animal Watch up there.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch on the endangered African penguin and have learned a little bit about the conservation efforts around the world trying to protect and save this really, really badly declining species. And if you'd like to find out more about the amazing work that this rescue does, I'm going to pop their website underneath and you can click through and you can read about how you can help these penguins and if you live in this area and you find an injured penguin then you can contact these guys straight away and they'll come over and they'll rescue them and bring them back here which i think is fantastic i've really enjoyed myself today and if you enjoyed this episode too then give us a big thumbs up and subscribe by clicking the button in the bottom of the screen and i will be back next week with another fabulous episode of animal watch on animal rescue conservation and wildlife all over the world bye for now I've been given regular updates on Honey Pot and Bavaro and have been sent videos of them happily swimming in the enclosure. And I'm thrilled to announce that since the filming of this episode, they have both been successfully released back into the wild. Here is some wonderful footage from that special day.